chocolate, dark, sweet, and delicious. Today, chocolate is everywhere. From the ubiquitous chocolate bar to chocolate lattes. We eat it as children. We eat it in celebration. It is our collective guilty pleasure. To say that the world is in love with chocolate is an understatement. In 2012, chocolate was estimated to be an $83 billion a year industry and growing. We consume tons of the stuff. Yet this wonderful food comes, at first glance, from a rather unremarkable source, the cacao tree. It is an extremely delicate plant, native to Central and South America. The chocolate itself is derived from its seed pods. It can only be grown under the most particular of climatic conditions and requires constant heat and humidity. In fact, the entire world's supply of chocolate is grown in just a narrow band 20 degrees north and south of the equator. Although chocolate is eaten around the world, nearly 65% of chocolate consumption occurs in rich Western countries. As a result, chocolate today has become a symbol of westernization and globalization with all the benefits and problems this brings. So how did we get here? Although most of us are familiar with chocolate in its modern, sugary, solid form, it was not always so. The story of chocolate begins nearly 4,000 years ago in Mesoamerica. There the seed pods of the cacao plant were first made into a pleasant but bitter drink used in ritual and medicine. To the native peoples of Mesoamerica, chocolate was the drink of the gods, reserved for kings and nobility. After the voyages of Christopher Columbus led to the first widespread contact between Europeans and Native Americans, chocolate would cross the ocean and conquer Europe. During the 16th century, the Spanish would popularize it as a novelty, an exotic, stimulant beverage, not unlike coffee. Over the next 200 years, chocolate would transform into a sugary drink of the European elite. But the story of chocolate was just beginning. In this course, we'll also explore chocolate's darker history, its role in European colonization and the slave trade. We'll see how during the Industrial Revolution, cheap chocolate became available to the masses, allowing the growth of a modern chocolate culture. And finally, its place as a mass-produced, globalized product of the 20th century. In this course, you'll not only explore the rich cultural, social, and economic history of chocolate, you will learn how we do history. That is, how do historians know anything? How do they know what actually happened in the past? What types of evidence did they use? Together, we will use the history of chocolate as a way to understand critical thinking and historical context. We'll explore the limits of what we can know about the past and make some best guesses for what we don't know. We'll survey current research on the subject called historiography and finally, we'll get a chance to get our hands dirty and do some real history ourselves. We'll learn to apply these historical skills in projects throughout the term. Welcome to the History of Chocolate.